One of the most anticipated features in the BitTensor network is DTAO, sometimes also called RAO. And in this video, we're just going to give a quick update as what we know so far. And I'm dating this November 11th because this video might be out of date later today or tomorrow. Just a caveat, this is under development. It's going to change. We know it's going to change. And what shows up in mainnet is going to be completely different from what we see today. But this is just so that people can get an idea of what's going on really quickly. So why are we bringing DTAO to BitTensor? One of the biggest concerns in the network is the way subnet emissions are distributed. Today, it's done by the validators on the root subnet. This is a fairly centralized process. There are only so many validators, and so that gives the control of subnet emissions to just a few individuals in the community. You can see the emissions of the root network changes drastically over time because small changes by a few individuals can drastically change the way the emissions work. The emissions are determined by the validators on root and the amount of stake they have. So let's look at staking today. Here's a screenshot from TauStats where TauStats, the validator, has about 851,000 Tau staked to it. And you can see over on the very far right, the NOM 24 hours 1,000 Tau. If you have 1,000 Tau staked to TauStats, that's how much you will make in one day. And you can see that here, I found a stake, someone who is staked to Tau Stats that has almost exactly a thousand Tau. And you can see between November 1st and November 2nd, they got about 0.4 something Tau in that day. It's, it's 0.41 Tau across the whole network. But what's really happening is Tau Stats is validating across all 53 subnets and earning Tau on each one of those subnets that we then aggregate into one value to show you how much you've earned in a day. In DTAO, that fundamentally changes. Every single subnet is going to now have a token. And so we name the tokens Alpha, Beta, Gamma, Delta. And when we run out of Greek letters, we go to Hebrew. And then when we run out of Hebrew, we go to Arabic. And I'm sure there's a plan for when we run out of Arabic. Um, for short, we call them all Alpha. So if we're talking about an Alpha token, it is the token for that subnet. It doesn't necessarily mean the token for subnet one. So now what can happen is the community has the ability to buy the alpha token for a specific subnet. And then the amount of alpha that is purchased um, can determine the amount of emissions. So it's putting your tau where your belief is. If you really like subnet 37, you can buy subnet 37 alpha and that subnet becomes more valuable gets higher emission, and then the tau that you stake to that subnet makes more because it's a more valuable subnet. So let's walk through what's going to happen here. Um, the root subnet, staking to root, just like staking to a validator, that's what you do today when you're staking tau. That's still going to exist. And then you're going to have d tau. And then there's going to be a ratio determining which one has more weight. And when a subnet registers, it's going to initially be all on the root side. And then over time, there's going to be a formula that changes that to where it gets to 50-50. And this might even change beyond 50-50, where half of the emission is determined by the validators on the root subnet, and half is determined by those who have purchased the alpha token. So let's talk a little bit about how staking is going to work. Because right now, you stake to the root subnet. You make a little bit of tau on all of them. And then that's reported back as how much tau you've earned each day. That's going to change in that now you're going to earn a little bit of alpha, a little bit of beta, a little bit of, you know, all of the different alpha tokens. I got tired after um, rho. Um, so root staking will work exactly the same as it does today. You're just going to earn these alpha tokens instead. Um, it's safer. The emission is going to be less than it is today because we now have to give some of that emission to those who are staking on the decal side of it. On the detail side of things, you can buy and stake that alpha on a validator. You've got larger returns, but there's also potential to lose stake. We're not going to get into the details of the math because that's all going to change. But one thing that is neat is that because you're staking to a validator, it also acts as stake on root. And so you will still earn a little bit of alpha across all of the other subnets where that validator is active. So what does this mean for you? If you're looking at low risk, you can just keep staking on the root subnet. 
Instead of your Tau growing though, you'll start earning alpha tokens for all the subnets where your validator is actively validating. You can then convert those back to Tau if you want to and keep everything on the root subnet, or you can start accumulating those alpha tokens and start dabbling in maybe a, a little bit more of the, the interesting DTAO high risk um, environment. If you're looking a little more high risk or being more involved in the BitTensor ecosystem, you can buy alpha tokens of the subnets you're really interested in. Those alpha tokens are going to gain value faster, but it also is very determinant on how the community feels about the quality of that subnet. If people start losing faith or trust in that subnet, the value of that alpha is going to go down. There's higher gains, but there's also higher risk when you invest in alpha or DTAO. If you're interested in looking at the math of where it stands today, there's a great Notion article. I'll link it below. And there's a Python simulation, which generated this screenshot. It's been very helpful to help me understand what's going on so I can try to present it to you all. Um, as always, we're TauStats, TauStats.io. Come read our documentation at docs.taustats.io and, and view all the analytics in real time for what's happening in the BitTensor ecosystem.